It's game night. You're hosting, and you want to bring something delicious to the table. It's been a long week, so something heavy is out. Still, you want something rich and flavorful. Something that hits the tongue like a truffle, but the stomach like a feather. Of course, a deck builder. Hmm. So many are just so derivative of dominion or ascension. Not that it's a bad thing. You want something interactive, but kind. Clever, but not complex. Something, something mouthfeel. The solution is clear. It's time to serve SPQF. Hi, I'm head chef Grant Rudick of Shea Hyperbole, and I'm going to teach you how to prepare the two to four player game SPQF. I'll teach you how to set up and play this game in your own home. Setup is identical regardless of player count. Each player copies the same steps. Prepare each player's place setting with a single tableau and set their civilization marker on the zero. Then, give each player the five different cards marked with an S in the top left corner. The S is Latin for Startus Cartus, which means starter cards. Shuffle the 48 cards of the Civilization deck and deal each player five randomly. Once you're familiar with the game, we recommend you season in a draft with these five cards. Combine them with your starter cards to form your deck. Give each player a monument randomly. Players should examine their own monument, but otherwise keep it a secret. Give each player a reference card. Finally, determine a player to go first and give them the first player coin. I think three minutes at 425 will do the trick. Each player in the game will follow these steps I just showed you. Now, let's set up the central elements. You'll need a supply of green cubes. These represent crops or your civilization's agricultural wealth. You'll also need a supply of black cubes. These represent materials or your civilization's industrial wealth. The civilization cards not dealt to the players are placed in the middle to form a deck. Deal the top three cards face up. Place the VP tokens for nutty, victorious flavor. I sort them by value. Wow, that smells fantastic. Each player draws five cards from their deck and we're ready to begin. SPQF is played in turns, beginning with the player with the first player token, and continuing until the end of the game. Each turn, you're going to play one card to use its actions. You can enhance the output of this card with certain other cards in your hand. Your opponents can follow the action by playing certain cards. Before we get into specifics though, it's useful to dig into the gist of the actions. You can gather crops or materials from the central supply and put them here on your tableau. You can never have more than four of each at any time. Gather represents the fruits of your economy. You could store resources that you've gathered and place on available slots here. You are limited to one per civilization level. You could spend these resources, but the real benefits come from cards. Storing resources represents your infrastructure. You could store cards from your hand, which means you tuck them under the left side of your tableau. Like resources, you are limited to storing one per civilization level. Also like resources, cards will give you benefits for having cards stored. One of the primary uses for your resources is to expand your civilization level. This represents your civilization's growth. Discard the resources shown on the reference card, with white indicating either color of your choice. Then increase your civilization level, which means you can store more cards and resources. If you're the first to reach a civilization level, score 1 VP. You could score victory points in a variety of ways, including playing certain cards, storing resources, and more. There are ways to gain more cards, remove cards from your hand or discard from the game, and other bonus actions, but this covers the heart of the experience. Now, a turn. The active player chooses one card from their hand and plays it face up. Most cards have two actions, which can be used in any order. The current player can enhance the card. Most actions indicate a modifier, like the hammer, that can be played from your hand to enhance the action. For every mallet played, you gain an additional crop. Let's play an oak leaf, which enhances anything.
Now, unless the action has this symbol, your opponents can follow it. Following represents trade and peaceful relationships. Your opponents cannot follow the bottom action on any card. However, they can follow the top one. To follow, an opponent plays one card from their hand that has the same modifier or an oak leaf as the one on the card. Now, we all resolve the action. Ah, but one more thing. While stored cards can never be used to follow, they can be used to enhance. I stored a card with two mallets, which brings my action up to four. This says gather crops equal to mallets, so I gather four crops. Opponents who follow gather one, typically. So that is the, <coughs> uh, the meat of the turn, but it isn't everything. Let's cover a few final pieces really quickly. SPQF is a deck builder, and as such, you'll be recruiting new cards. In fact, as civilizations are usually growing, you must recruit one card. Choose one of the three cards in the central trade row and add it to your discard pile. Then, you need to discard. Firstly, everyone discards any cards played for the action. This includes the action card, cards played to modify, and cards played to follow. Then, discard any starter cards in your hand. Remember the S in the top left corner. Finally, place any remaining cards in your hand face up in front of your tableau. This is your trade row. Hmm, trade row. Let's rewind. Remember when I said you must recruit a card each turn? Well, you take one card from any trade row. This can be the central one or another player's. Yes, you could take one card from an opponent. No cost, nothing. This represents immigration and the transfer of culture and ideas between civilizations. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would you let someone eat off your plate? You might really want to hold onto a card, or in many cases, you won't need it. SPQF is designed around this core mechanism. Breathe deeply, relax, and embrace the family-style nature of this meal. Trust me. At the end of your turn, draw the top five cards of your deck. If you don't have five, shuffle your discard pile and draw until you have five. Opponents who followed do not draw any additional cards. The player to your left now takes their turn. Turns continue like this until one of three things happens. One player reaches civilization level five, one player earns 25 or more victory points, or least likely, the civilization deck runs out of cards. When this happens, finish the current round so that each player gets an equal number of turns. Reference the first player token to track this. To tally scores, you count your victory point tokens. Then, you get points equal to your civilization level. Level 4 is worth 15 points. Cards in your deck or stored with an acorn in the top right corner grant you 1 VP each. Finally, you reveal and tally your monuments. Your monument indicates one of the modifiers. For each modifier in your deck or stored, score 1 VP. Then, whoever earns the most points for their monument scores an additional 3 points. My 5 VP is better than this monument's 3 VP, so I earned a bonus. Whoever has the most points wins. If tied, whoever has the highest civilization level wins. That's it. That's how you play. You'll need to read the rules to learn the specifics of each card, and I left out a few details for brevity's sake, but this should be a great primer. Cheers!